um, Alice Paul. Um, learned about her in the exhibit. Anybody remember reading about Alice Paul? No, she's in there. Um, she was one of the biggest leaders in the suffrage movement in the United States. And she was arrested not once, not twice, but three times. Well, seven, actually, she was arrested seven times. She was put in jail three times. And one of the reasons that she was arrested is that she had all of these confrontational tactics that she brought back from England from the suffragists there, like throwing rocks, like coming out and protesting every single day, making yourself a nuisance. Um, in England, they also threw eggs at people. I don't know if the American suffragists did that. So these were controversial tactics that she used. What do you think about those tactics? Do you think she was right to do these things? A little bit too aggressive. Too aggressive? Which part was too aggressive? The rocks. The rocks. I suppose it depends on what you're throwing rocks at, but don't go out and throw rocks at people. Two negatives don't make a positive. <laughs> Two negatives don't make a positive. That's a good point. But she won, right? Yeah. Women have the right to vote. At least she did something right. What really changed and turned the tide of public opinion was when the American public found out that um, these women were being arrested and they were being treated really harshly while they were in prison. So for example, I mean, think about this. Picture your mother. They were probably mostly around, and they were all ages, but just picture your mother being involved in this. Your mother is out protesting for the right to vote. She's arrested. She's placed into a workhouse where she's forced to do hard labor for 10 or 12 hours a day. No matter if she's sick, or isn't feeling well, or is injured, some of these women even died from overwork. And if she was lucky enough not to be sent to a workhouse, she may have been sent to a prison where they often would beat them. This is a, less than 100 years ago in our country. They would beat them. They sometimes would handcuff them with their hands above their heads like this overnight in their cells. Some of these women went on hunger strikes. Alice Paul, for instance, went on a hunger strike. And they didn't want her to die because that obviously would be bad in the press, right, to have someone who's a national figure die while they're in police custody. So they force fed her. You may have read about this in the panel, in the exhibit. Now, what do you think when I say force feeding? It's that's not too far off, really. They didn't chew her food. They didn't chew her food for now. They didn't do that. <laughs> that would be a bit extreme. Um, but they did. They tied her down to a gurney, tied her down, forced a funnel into her mouth, and then poured this raw egg liquid down her throat. Now, what would you do if somebody tried to do that to you? I would just eat it. You would just eat it? She spit it back at them. She was hardcore, Alice Paul. Um, and one of the prison guards actually smuggled in some paper. They weren't allowed to write letters. So he smuggled in some paper for them. And they wrote down all of the stuff that was happening and sent it out. And that is when public opinion started to change. Even the president, so President Woodrow Wilson, he changed his mind and started pu uh, publicly supporting women's suffrage. So we are going to watch a video. Everybody familiar with Lady Gaga? Mm -hmm. You know who Lady Gaga is? Yes. Um, how about her song, Bad Romance? Yes. Has anybody seen the video? Well, there's a company, this is not the Connecticut Women's Hall of Fame where I work, but there's a company that has done a wonderful music video telling the story of Alice Paul through the song Bad Romance. They've rewritten the lyrics. So we're going to watch that. 
So keep an eye out in this video for those elements of Alice Paul's story that I just was telling you about. And also, take a second, close your eyes. Envision those images, the photos that we looked at. Because you're going to see some of that in here as well. And I'm going to have you look over at me. Okay. So what is your name? Alyssa. Alyssa. So Alyssa, what did you think about the program you just saw? Um, well, it was a lot of stuff that I didn't know before. You know, if I didn't, if she didn't come in and show us all that stuff, I wouldn't have known, you know, like everything that women had to go through just to get the right to vote. And what did you think about all that they had to go through? I mean, I think it was really sad because, you know, they shouldn't have been treated that way just because they want to be treated like everyone else. Um, what I find really interesting is that, you know, we were taught all different types of history in school, but women's history is pretty much left out. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so how do you think... Um, the program that you saw has impacted you? Um, well, I think it impacted me a lot because, you know, it showed that, you know, my gender had to come a long way. You know, like everyone that came before me had to do a lot of stuff just so I could have the right to, you know, vote once I'm old enough to do it. And, you know, they fought for something that really paid off. So do you think um, that um, all that they did to get you to have the opportunity to vote um, will affect your commitment to exercise your ability to vote? Yeah, I think so, because, um, you know, just knowing that if they didn't do all of that, I wouldn't be able to do it, you know, just gives me more of a reason to be involved, you know, to show them that it all paid off. Okay, can you find a way to word that? Um, because I kind of like fed you the whole thing, but I need you to say the whole thing. So um, if you're comfortable saying something along the lines of, you know, seeing their struggle um, makes me feel more committed to um, exercising my right to vote. Something along those lines. Okay. Um, if, it's, if it's the truth. Okay. What's true for you? Um, well, yeah, I really do think that it helped because, you know, if, um, I don't know how to word it. It helped what? I, I, I need you to say the what. Uh, I don't know how to say it any different than I said it. You mean say? Say the word specifically. Okay. That, um, um, that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but. But you said it, so I just regurgitated what you said in a way that was more clear. So um, just stating that, um, you know, seeing their fight, seeing everything that they went through, uh, makes you feel more committed to exercising your right to vote when it comes time for you to be able to vote. Something along those lines. Okay. Um, you know, seeing the way that, you know, Alice Paul, you know, she got arrested so many times and um, she did so many things to fight for everyone else and all the other women to have the right to vote. Um, I lost it. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> um, seeing the way that Alice Paul, you know, fought for the right, she got arrested, you know, seven times and did all this stuff for us to vote really shows that, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't let all of the stuff that she did and all of the other activists, like all of the stuff that they did, we shouldn't let it go unnoticed or unappreciated. Like women should exercise the right to vote because, you know, it was fought for. Women went through a lot of things and, you know, they suffered a lot for us to get our right to vote. And we shouldn't let all the work go down in vain. Great, thank you so much. Okay. Welcome. All right, so let's start by saying your name. Uh, my name is Kurt. Kurt. Mm -hmm. So Kurt, tell me, 
how this program impacted you today? What are your thoughts about it? Well, it impacted me in a way because like, um, I never really knew that um, about all this stuff that women, I thought, because like, I'm from a different country, so I thought that women here, like, they just, everything was granted and like, I mean, like, they just had to, the right to vote. I just thought that was how everything was until like, it came out about today and they were saying how the women went through many stuff to actually got their right to vote and got to like, do many things and have equal rights as a man. So like, I thought that was like a big thing for them. So, Great. yeah. Thank you, I'm sorry we ran out of time. So did I start from the beginning or like, yeah. well, I went with so, my name? So how, did, how did the program today impact you? Well, it impacted me in like a big way because um, like I never knew that when went through all this stuff because like I'm from a different country, so I just... Can I stop you for just a second? I'm sorry. Can you, can you look at me while you're speaking? Right. You just look down for a little bit. All right. So, um... Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I like it's from the beginning to beginning? Yeah, yeah. All right. So like um, it impacted me in a big way because like um, I'm from a different country and like I didn't know that women went through all this stuff. So like I just thought that like um, they just came here and like all the, the these things were just granted to them, like the freedom, the equal rights as men and all that stuff. I didn't know they had to go through like go on strike and protest and all this stuff to get what they actually wanted and work hard for it. And like. I think that women these days, like, they actually deserve because, I mean, I'd look at some of my friends and, like, they're really smart and, like, I'd, I'd look, if I was supposed to, like, look into the future, I'm sure, like, they'll be able to impact the country in a big way, like, with their education because they're, like, focused and all that stuff. So, Great. I think it's really important. Do you have any other questions? Mm -hmm. well, I was asking the boss the other day, like, why they kind of so why do you think it thank you so why do you think it's important for to, to learn about these um, historical events well uh, I think it's important because like people just like go around and like think that like take things for granted and be like So like, um, I think that um, they like it's important because like um, it, like people go and, and think of like take things for granted. Be like um, how like they have to the right to vote and they would look at someone and be like, I mean, they did nothing to deserve this. Because like people like normally say, oh, they have a woman's um, there is it Women's History Month or. It's Women's History, Women's History Month. Yeah, Women's History They would look and say, like, oh, they have a Women's History Month for, like, me for, like, no reason at all, at all and be like, like, um, like, they gave to them for no reason at all. So, like, if they actually knew what the Women's History was about, then they'll be more appreciative and be like, um, like, they actually have a right to celebrate Women's History Month because of all these things that they have went through. We include this as part of our curriculum. Some teachers do it in uh, their... Um, progressive and sometimes right before uh, the 1920s uh, unit. Um, I will be adding it to my civil liberties unit when we get into the civil rights movement. So we go from slavery uh, to women's rights to all the way to um, Martin Luther King and then modern day civil rights um, liberties. So it's important um, and to cover it, although sometimes it gets um, thrown in as a um, one small segment in the 1920s type of thing. So we're trying to expand that. Fantastic. Good. So how do you think the, um, uh, the programs offered through the DIY history, offered through Connecticut Women's Hall of Fame, um, has impacted you and your ability to be able to teach on the subjects? Um, 
So uh, just the exhibit itself was a nice introduction to um, to the unit and, and they were able to pull out some things that I probably wouldn't have mentioned in my unit and, and brought in some inquiries that I would have never thought of. Uh, I do cover Alice Paul, I do cover um, some of the big names, but some of the less lesser known names uh, I don't necessarily cover, so programs like this really do expose the students to um, some new people. inspired because I'm so so sorry I'm gonna start this over are you nervous yes just a oh, little be nervous. <laughs> okay. um, how did it inspire Do you want your friend to go first would that help no no 
to you. Okay, it's I can you. I can just do this. I mean, it's not okay. <clears throat> Look at me. All right. It's me and you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was inspired by all of the presenter. Oh, hmm. I'm going to start that over. Sorry, inductees. I was inspired by the inductees' stories. Their ability to push past what was seen as the norm was inspiring, and I want to be able to do that in my future, even actually here while I'm at this school. That was awesome. Okay. <laughs> that was great. Great. Do you have any other questions okay. for her? Um, you did the Thing before talking about being in, in the sciences, right? You got that on tape? Yeah. Oh, no, oh, I, I should speak no, about them? Okay. okay, did you get that on tape? Like, no. Okay. Not, not the strong you. I want the strong you. Okay, the, the strong, strong me. Is here now. The strong me, like, <laughs> calm down. Okay, I'm all, okay. Um, I am currently um, beginning computer science as my major, and the fact that it is a field where not a lot of women are actually participating in it, it's just, I just want to be able to have someone look up to me and say, you know, they can also get into a science field and not have to do something that just seems like every. Mm, okay, how do I put this? Let me try that again. Um, let me try to figure out what I'm going to say before. It, okay, uh, it's a field that not a in, and I want other people to look up to me. But why? Two seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm ready. All right. I think the door is going to close. Okay. Yeah, it is. One more time. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> um, I... <laughs> All right. I will be a. I am a. Com <laughs> Sorry, that was me. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I am currently a computer science major at Eastern, and I think it would be amazing if I were one of the people that were on here in history that people can look up to. Just just pretty much to let people know that women getting into a science field is possible and that it's not some, it's not only for men and just women are good at math and being able to work with their hands on things. I don't know where I'm going with this, to be honest. So bottom line, what's the point you want to make? Um, that science isn't for men. That computer science is for everyone. And getting into a science major is not just, I just said that. Okay, I'll start that part over. Okay, so what I think I'm getting mm -hmm. is that you really related to yeah. the women, um, the women inductees. Mm -hmm. um, um, because um, you are a woman who, um, what do I want to say? I just had it and then it left. What are we trying to say? You are a woman going into a field that's dominated by men. Right. And you want to be someone that younger women and girls that's can look it. up to. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I keep on like trying to say that. I'm like, yeah. oh, I want people to look up to me, and they already do. That's all. <laughs> okay. But in other ways. Yes, yeah. in other ways. Not okay. just for my height. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't add that because they only see up there. <laughs> okay. So, how much time did I take up so far? No. Okay. We had it. Okay. Yes, definitely. Oh. <clears throat> and it's going to start now. Okay. Um, I'm currently entering into the computer science field and I would like to be one of the women who enter a field that's predominantly male, that is predominantly. That is male dominated. Dom male dominated, okay, there we go, okay. And now, all right. Um, I'm currently a computer science major at Eastern and I would like to be one of the women who 
work in a field that is male dominated and to be able to make history, I would like other younger people to look up to me and also to believe that they can get into a math major or a science major and not be seen as just, I guess, the token for a science field. Like, um, and then I stop. Does that make sense? Okay. Token for a science field, does that make sense? Like, I would elaborate on that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, so that when they get into a job, it won't be like, oh, it's just because they're a woman. So. So that they can actually succeed and make a contribution in the field. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that they're a woman, but they're actually a member of the field. Member. <laughs> OK. Um, so for after token. <laughs> By token, I mean that I want them to be able to get into the field and make progress and not just be in the field because they're a woman and get the job because they're a woman. Okay, and then I start over and say, <clears throat> by, what, by being... Okay, mm, sorry. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Okay. By a token, I mean that I don't want the women who get into this field to think that they just got here because they are a woman. I want them to believe that they have done this and they have deserved the spot that they are in and that they are actually contributing to the computer science field. Very nice. So share a little bit about your experience in watching the program today. Um, well, I was happy that I got to attend. I thought it was really like inspirational and like I really learned a lot seeing like all the ladies that were like the attendees that, you know, were in the Supreme Court were judges, lawyers and like that's the field I want to be in. And like men are more authoritative than like women. So for me to like be a woman in like the law field and like try to get that authority is like really like hard and watching like how these like women did that and more throughout the course of their life like really inspired me and like motivated me to like chase my dreams. Very nice. Should I say more? Yeah, sure. So, um, so how, how did the program inspire you? It inspired me to keep trying because like one day there might be a girl that's in my shoes and like may get discouraged and seeing that like all the ladies that like fought for what they thought was right and like changed life for every girl in the world is like is inspiring me to like keep trying so I can like lead a little girl to you know follow her dreams even if it seems like impossible. Oh, your name, thank you. Courtney. Okay, say your name and spell your name. Courtney Calloway, C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y-C-A-L-L-A-W-A-Y. -L -L -A -A and what year are you? Sophomore. Thank you. Oh, the mic. How did you know that the statute was symbolizing justice? Um, well, I think that it's Thank you, Bambi. Thank you all so much for coming. It's really, we're very excited about launching our new DIY history program that Bambi has worked so hard on um, with others in our staff. But um, this is a great new program for us and very excited about um, in-home in schooling moms that could help us share these stories. Um, that's really what this year, this is our 20th anniversary year. I don't know whether Bambi has shared that with you all. And so the one thing we're trying to work on is getting as many of these women's stories 
um, out to the public as possible. So we hope that you will tell your friends about um, these women as well. And um, do you, I was actually, do you, were you going to go further with them about what they learned at the, no, I was just curious as to the women that you learned about today, um, did you know about any of these before? Just say yes, no, something. Yeah, you did. You had heard about them before from your books? Yeah. Um, did you learn about anybody today that you did not know about? And I think Bambi's going to make sure that you um, have a few more because um, what we've found so often is that when you all are studying history, frequently the women, um, certainly historically, have been uh, left out to some degree. So we hope to add those stories back into your um, studies and um, hope it will give you a real perspective on how women have really contributed to the growth of this state and this nation from the very beginning. So thank you again, and thank you in particular to the Old State House for um, providing this space and partnering with us to, um, to hold this program today. And thanks for coming. Nobody likes to pay taxes. We all want to keep our money for ourselves. So do you think it's better to, if you need more tax money, to make other people pay it or for you to pay it yourself? Which would you rather do? Have someone else pay for it or have someone else. someone else pay for it? And that's exactly what these guys did. So they chose to collect an unfair share of taxes from single female landowners only. So only single women who were not married and the Smith sisters were not married had to pay this extra tax. So there were the Smith sisters and two other widows in town. Those were the only people in the whole town who had to pay this extra money. Does that sound fair? No. So at first, 
the sisters refused to pay. Abby argued that they should have the right to vote on a decision that affected them. The town leaders ignored her. The tax collector ordered the Smiths to pay a tax bill of $200. $200 doesn't sound like very much, right? But if it were today's dollars, that would be $4,000, which is kind of a lot of money. So frightened they would lose their farm, Julia and Abby paid up. But the sisters were angry, and they began a public battle that would last for years and would capture the attention of the whole nation. Taxation without representation, which should sound familiar to those of you who've learned about the American Revolution, that was one of the big issues, right? Um, so being forced to pay taxes they had no say about is what drove the American colonies to rebel against England in 1776. Smith ancestors had actually fought in the revolution. And now, almost 100 years later, men could vote, but women still could not. Abby called their own case taxation without representation. Throughout 1873, Abby attended town meetings and demanded the right to vote. Often, the men wouldn't even let her speak. And when they did, they ignored her, not even recording her appearance in the minutes of their meetings. So it was as if she didn't even exist. So Abby gave her speeches outside. Her stage was an ox cart on the town green. So she just got up into a cart outside and started talking about what she believed in. When the tax came due in October, the sisters paid an installment of $24, 12% interest on their yearly $200 tax bill. Male landowners were allowed to do this. So this was perfectly acceptable. But the town leaders insisted that the Smiths pay the full total immediately. On New Year's Day, 1874, a new tax collector named George Andrews marched into the Smith barn. He demanded the seven cows worth more than $400 as payment for their overdue tax. How much was their original bill? Anybody remember? $200. $200. So the cows were worth $400. That's double what they actually owed. The cows were to be held for one week on the property of the Smith's neighbors, the Hales. If the sisters hadn't paid their entire tax by then, the town would auction off the cows and keep the money as payment. So they took their cows. Now, do the cows look happy to be leaving their nice warm barn? with people that they know. No, so how do you think they might have sounded? Yeah. And they probably were making some noise with their feet, right? Not on other people. That's not very nice. They really were not very happy. So the sisters and the cows were furious. The cows bellowed in protest. I haven't heard any bellows yet on the part of the cows. No. What does a bellowing cow sound like? No. I'm very unhappy. Mr. Hale said, Nothing could exceed the trouble we had getting them into my yard. The cows resisted every way possible. He and his wife were on the side of the Smith sisters. The seven cows spent the week in Hale's tobacco shed, which measured only 15 by 12 feet. That's not very big for seven cows. Crowded, the cows stomped and groaned. They needed milking, but they wouldn't let the Hales milk them. That's where the kicking probably came in, by the way. <laughs> Abby and Julia had to hike over for the morning and evening chore. You can see them walking in the snow. I mean, these are 70-year-old women, and they had to walk over to their neighbor's house. And it's not like our neighbors, where they're pretty close by, but this is quite a distance, to milk the cows in the morning and at night because the cows would not let anyone else milk them. Mrs. Hale wouldn't let a drop of the cow's milk enter her house. She told Julia that it seemed as though the cows were stolen. Demanding to vote, the Smiths stood firm and did not pay up. A week later, Mr. Andrews led a rowdy parade down Main Street to the auction. Bessie, the best cow, plodded right behind him. 
The other six cows followed, prodded by barking dogs and a drummer boy. So this is quite a, quite a public display. Julia and Abby came in last in a horse-drawn wagon. On the green, Julia recalled that there were 40 men waiting to buy some Alderney cows for very cheap. So they're looking for a discount. This is like a garage sale, or a tag sale, is what we call it, right? Yeah. Uh, when Mr. Andrews began the auction, no one bid more than a couple of dollars for the cows. Abby and Julia did, couldn't tell if people were being stingy or being nice. But it turns out that most of the townsfolk had sided with the sisters. So they didn't want to buy the cows and basically steal them from the Smiths. Finally, Abby and Julia gave a male neighbor $101.39 to bid for four cows. Mr. Andrews, the auctioneer, flustered and grumbled, sold. And since no one bid for the other three cows, he threw them in with the first four. So they got all their cows back for $101.39. Abby and Julia still hadn't paid their taxes. They had simply bought some cows for the exact amount they owed the tax collector. So they were being kind of sneaky. They were buying the cows, but they weren't technically paying their taxes. Newspapers made heroines of Julia and Abby. Lucy Stone, a well-known activist for women's rights, penned a running account for Women's Journal, the publication of the American Women's Suffrage Association. The Boston Daily Advertiser said, two Connecticut women are just now doing a mightier work on behalf of their gender than all the rest of the country. And the Springfield Republican of Massachusetts asked, is taxation without representation which was wrong in Boston in 1774, right in Glastonbury in 1874. Anybody know what was in 1774? It was the big Ooh. Boston Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party, right? They were protesting the taxation without representation, absolutely. So this is 100 years after that. In the spring of 1874, the Smiths again refused to pay their taxes. At the town meeting in March, the men would still not let Abby speak. So again, she climbed up on an ox cart on the green. She proclaimed, our town should act as a family with people working together and taking care of each other rather than ruling over one another and denying the women a voice. So if you notice, there are more people listening to her this time than there were the first time. This time, as a penalty, Mr. Andrews filed legal papers giving the town temporary ownership of 15 acres of the Smith's Meadowland. So he, this time he took their land, not their cows. Julia and Abby, supported by neighbors, appeared at the auction several weeks later to buy back the land. But it had already been sold. Mr. Andrews had illegally accepted an early bid from Nelson Hardin, a neighbor to the north who had been trying to buy the Smith land for years. So this is somebody who'd been trying to get his hands on their land for a long time. And he finally succeeded, but he did it illegally. Mr. Hardin had bid only $78.35 for land valued at about $2,000. So he got a significant discount. The sisters vowed to get their land back. The tax law was very clear. Movable property, such as furniture or working animals, should be sold before any land was taken. Julia and Abby sued the tax collector and the town of Glastonbury for trespassing and for illegally taking their land. In court, the sisters said they owned more than enough movable property to cover the tax bill. Mr. Andrews disagreed, claiming they had nothing of worth. Now what do we know that they have that can cows. move the cows? And how much were the cows worth? 400. At least $400, probably more. At first the judge ruled in the Smith's favor. Then town officials appealed and won the land back. Finally, a judge ruled that Mr. Andrews could not take the land. He could, however, take movable property. And cows obviously could move. Over the next few years, the Smiths still refused to pay taxes unless they could vote. 
They trudged back and forth to town meetings and to court. The cows trudged back and forth to auction. Each year, the sisters petitioned the Connecticut State Legislature for the right to vote. Each year, they were denied. And guess where that happens? Right here in this building. So remember, we just learned that the Connecticut State Legislature was meeting in this building. Probably this building and also the new building, because this is kind of at that in-between time. During this whole time, several cows gave birth to baby cows. The Smiths named some of the calves Taxi, Vody, and Martha Washington and Abigail Adams after the brilliant wives of America's first and second presidents. Supporters held fundraisers to pay for the Smiths' lawyers. One friend sold bouquets of flowers with hair from the cow's tails. The bouquets were tied with a black ribbon on which was written, Taxation Without Representation. The sisters eventually won their case on final appeal. They toured America, giving speeches and writing about women's rights until Abby's death in 1878. Julia died in 1886. But it wasn't until 1920 that the US Congress added the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, finally giving women the right to vote. The Smith sisters didn't live to see it, but they had played a part in making it happen. And so had their cows. So that is the story of Julia and Abby Smith of Glastonbury, Connecticut. Now, first of all, what do you guys think about what they did? Do you think they were right to challenge the town? Or should they have just gone along with what everybody wanted them to do? They should have challenged the town. Why? I saw some other nodding of heads. So why were they right to challenge the town? What was unfair about the tax, first of all? What was wrong with the tax? Why was it unfair? Because it was only on the widows. It was only on the widows and the single women, so it wasn't everybody. And they also had no say. I mean, how often do you guys say to your parents, well, that's not fair. Why do we have to do that? And they say, because I'm your mom or I'm your dad, and that's what I say you have to do, right? It's the same idea, except they actually had legal recourse to challenge this. So what do you think about their tactics? I mean, they couldn't speak. What options did they have? They didn't have, you know, they didn't have email, they didn't have any of that stuff that we might use now to get our message out. They couldn't make videos. Well, how did they get their message out? How did they challenge, do their challenges? What did they do? She stood outside on an ox cart and she just talked to anyone who would listen. And that's how it all started. That's how it started. And then they were able to take it up each level until finally they got to the Connecticut State Legislature. So why do you think, we've been talking about this and we heard this a little bit in the tour, why do you think that the people who were in charge at the time did not want these women and other women to speak in their meetings? What was their reasoning? What was their rationale? Very quiet. What are some of the, the reasons why they may not have wanted things to change? What happens when you have a whole new group of people who all of a sudden get to help make a decision about something? Let's say that there are two of you, you know, two of you, two kids in your family, and all of a sudden you have two more kids, and you all get to vote. Does your opinion count just a little bit less? Because you have two more people with their own opinions that get to vote too? That's exactly what one of the reasons was. The men were worried that if they let the women vote, their own opinions would no longer prevail, which we all like it when we get our own way, right? That's always a nice thing when you get to 
do your own thing and have what you want to happen happen. Well, that's what these men were experiencing. They controlled the legislature, they controlled Congress, and they were able to do whatever they wanted, basically. And they didn't have to take women into account. So they were worried about that. Other things that they said, and you guys can tell me if you think that this is true, given that we've, women have had the right to vote for almost 100 years, but they said that women weren't smart enough, that they weren't educated enough, that they didn't care enough to make their own decisions. Do you think that's true? No. Why not? Because normally women go to the exact same schools. That's the Okay, so now we have a lot of, we have mostly equal education. Mm -hmm. What do you think about being independent? Do you think that when, I mean, there are a bunch of girls here. Do you guys have your own opinions? Do you always agree with the people around you? No, we all have our own opinions. And that's what these, the Smiths and other women were fighting for, the right to express their own opinions and to have their views and their rights taken into account when we were writing the laws. We heard about Isabella Beecher Hooker, right? Yeah. Who challenged the notion that married women could not own property. Um, what are some of the things that might that you might want to change now, whether it's in your, in your circle of friends, or in your town, in the country? What are some of the laws that you think might need to change now? Or some of the rules, or? Hmm? Okay, and so how would you maybe want to, how would you go about trying to change that? If you don't agree with what's going on and what the law is, how would you change that? What are some of the things that you could do? Make it illegal. But how would you want, to, how could you, this is all, because remember these are two women, these are not two really powerful women, these are just two sisters living in a small town in Connecticut and they were able to get this changed because they didn't agree with it. So what could you do? This doesn't, not, it doesn't have to just be Alyssa who answers. So if there's something that you want to change, what could you do as kids to change it? If you remember on the tour, we heard about how Isabella Beecher Hooker probably started. Do you remember? How did she probably start her, her change to the law? It was the same way that they started the Black Law, which made Prudence Crandall's school illegal. A petition. A petition. And what is a petition? A bunch of sloppy signatures on the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so that you have to write on the top of your petition what it is that you want people to agree with, and then you go and you ask people how you can do it. If you were the Smiths or Isabella Beecher Hooker in the 1870s, how do you go about getting a bunch of signatures on your petition? How do you think that she got her signatures on the petition? Did she call people on the phone? Did she send emails? Did she go yeah. on the news? Yeah, yeah. What did she do? She called people on the phone. She jumped in her Ferrari and drove <laughs> <laughs> What do you think she did? What do you think she had to do? What were the options that were available to them at that, at that point? She wrote it all. They probably went how she got to it all? She texted it. <laughs> probably not, although they probably did. They published some articles in the paper, letters to the editor. We still have those options open to us, right? But for petitions, they had to go person to person, house to house, and talk to people and convince them that what they were doing was the right thing to do. What are some of the ways that we could get people to sign a petition now? You make them. You can't force them. You want people to make their own decisions. You take a gun and point it at them. No. <laughs> no, you, you convince them. 
convince them by making arguments, right? And how do we talk to people these days? What are some of the media options that are available? Text. You can text people, absolutely. These days you can. <laughs> there are places on the internet where you can post a petition and then send it out to people by email so they can decide whether they want to sign it. You can make videos and get them onto the news. There are lots of different ways that we have that we can change things. But you have to remember that these women and many more like them, they didn't have these options available. They, had le they actually had to write letters to people and send them around the country. When was the last time any of you sat and wrote a letter by hand? Uh, Do you write letters? Today? today? Uh, really? Should Very I good. We don't do that anymore. And that's what they had in general. We would much rather send an email or make a phone call. But they didn't have those options. So they literally had to write everything down and send it around the country. So to get a lot of people excited about your issue and your cause was really hard. So we're going to look at some photos of some of the things that these women did. Now, we kind of stuck. We talked about the Smiths. We talked about Isabella Beecher Hooker. There were a lot of other women that some of them you may have heard of all around the country who were working and organizing women for the right to vote. Why is voting important, <coughs> first of all? We just had an election, so I'm sure you heard a lot of political ads and stuff on TV. You got a lot of things in the mail. Why is it important to vote? Boys, can you pay attention? Thank you. Why is it important to vote? Um, so your um, idea gets out there. You've what made you a decision, happen? right? What happens if you don't vote? Or if, I mean, you all are too young to vote, but what happens if a bunch, like a bunch of adults don't vote? What happens? Whoever the person they would have voted for, it will make that person lose. Or Probably more likely that they will lose if you don't vote for the person that you agree with, absolutely. Do you think that we have a right to complain about who our elected officials are if we don't vote and make our voice heard? No. If you aren't willing to show up and vote, you haven't exercised your voice and tried to make a difference in the world. And that's why voting is really important. That's why all these women fought for so long for the right to vote. They wanted to help make the decisions that affected their everyday lives. So some of them, you may, some of the national women you may have heard of, has anyone heard of Susan B. Anthony? Oh, I have. Yeah, she was arrested for trying to vote in 1872, I think, in New York. Another woman from Connecticut who was really active and really important, her name was Alice Paul. You may not have heard of her but she was instrumental in getting women the right to vote. So we're gonna look at a couple of pictures together of some protests that she led in order to raise awareness of what was going on and the fact that women needed the right to vote. She was arrested seven times for protesting and advocating for women's suffrage. Seven times, could you imagine being arrested even once? Let alone seven. Times. And she was put in jail three times. So it wasn't until after that that things began to change. And President Woodrow Wilson, who was president at the time, after seeing some of this, sorry? Um, hmm? Okay. So Woodrow Wilson, who was president at the time, changed his mind and started to, he then uh, um, favored the women's suffrage in that. And what, we heard this in the tour, what year did women get the right to vote in the U.S.? Somebody other than Nathan, because Nathan mm -hmm. is answering everything. 1920, <laughs> that's right. So we're going to look at a couple of photos. So let's see, there are, what, 15, 14, 12 of you, something like that. So why don't we divide up into three groups and of, you know, four or five each. And we're actually going to go sit at tables. So go pick a table and sit with a group of three or four or five. That we're seeing. But um, violet and green were the colors that the women's movement in England used 
And um, these sort of large suffragette banners um, are particularly scarce now. So very few people say them. So it's pretty rare to see one. Share your name. Um, Benjamin Lindblom. And how do you spell your last name, Benjamin? L I N D B L O M. Thank you. And um, so tell me, how how did you feel? Um, how did you feel about the uh, the story that um, that Bambi told earlier about the Smith sisters? Well, when I listened to it, it was like. I felt like um, when you're not only that high, you're not only that important in like the town, you can still make a difference. Terrific. And how, how do you think that story impacted you? Mm, that now might when there's like 
things I don't agree with, I could like, stand up for them. Very good. Could I have you, can I have you put your arm down? Nathan, thank you. Um, so Benjamin, um, can you repeat that, but this time repeat it just a little bit louder? <clears throat> when there's things in our society that I don't agree with, that uh -huh. I can stand up for them. Terrific. Great. And can you state your name for me? My name is Nathan Gray. And how do you spell your last name, Nathan? B R E Y. And what did you what did you take away from the story about the Smith sisters from Glastonbury? Um, that I would be more likely to stand up for what I don't believe in and to protest more. <laughs> that was good. Um, do me a favor because you said that very tentatively. Do you know what that means? Like you were asking me if it was the right question, the right answer or not. So, so I want you to say it like you know that's the right answer because it is the right answer because you, you answered the question. Okay. Truthfully, to you. I would be more likely to stand up for things that I don't believe in and more likely to protest. Very nice. Great, I think that was terrific. Thank you so much. You're dismissed. Yes. Again. You talked more this time. I did. Yes, you did. First time I did. Stand up for things that he doesn't know. Separately, so um, the other person is there just for comfort. Are you gonna ask questions? I, I will. Okay, okay. I will. If you want me to, or you can just. No, yeah, if you could, then. Okay. I, I can also, prompt you. I also want to talk about the justice. I don't want to. I said the best thing. If she, she could. What's that? What do you want to talk about? I don't want to talk about anything. Nothing at all? No, no, she wants you to ask a question. Oh, no, she wants to okay. Ask. All right. Good. So, I will start with you. Can you share your name? What I'm your name? Anna Lindblom. Anna Lindblom? Yeah. And how do you spell your last name? L I N D B L O M. So, Benjamin is your brother. Oh, okay. Very nice. So, what did you think about the program today when um, the woman Bambi was reading the story about the um, Smith sisters from Glastonbury? Um, we'll wait just a minute for you to answer that question. Someone's popping their head in, so I'll give you a couple seconds to think about it. like how much of a big deal like the woman actually took it to like standing in the markets and all that like I kind of thought in the past they would it wasn't as big of a deal as the as the woman made it because it really was a big deal like yeah like the woman really took a stand against it and I didn't realize that they really took it to that far of a stand against so it. were you familiar with the story previously no oh okay okay all right, so, um, so the women, so how are you impacted by the story? What did you take away from the story? 
that you can stand out against things that you might not think are right and you can let people know that you don't think that they're right. So you can, um, so you can speak up against things that, um, that you don't agree with. Good. Um, what else did you take away? From the story? Mm -hmm. um, I don't really watch anything else. I thought it was really cool how they persevered. Mm -hmm. How every time there was another obstacle that was placed in their way, they were able to overcome it which is really awesome. All right, thank you very much, that was great. All right. Now it's your turn. <laughs> so start by telling me your name. Alyssa. Alyssa, how do you spell it? A-L-Y-S-S-A. -S -S -A. Oh, very nice, that's very nice. And how old are you? Nine. Nine, okay. And Anna, I didn't ask you how old you are. How old are you? I'm 13. 13, great, thank you. So Alyssa, how, what did you think about the Smith sister story today? That was pretty cool that they still stood up when they were <clears throat> older. And the older they still wanted their but I need to have you say it again. <laughs> so what did you learn from the story today? I learned that they stood up and they wanted um, women to vote and that they were so older and they so well went through their years. That's very good. You're doing a great job. But I am picking up a lot of extra noise here. It just got noisy. I'm sorry, I can close this door. Well, it's not built like the new buildings. <laughs> it's a pretty one. Again, they had spittoons there. My goodness. Okay, we're going to need quiet on the set. So, um, what did you think of the story that you heard today about the Smith sisters? How are you impacted by it? Um, that they stood up, that they wanted, um, they wanted to vote, and they keep fighting for it in old age. 
Very nice. Thank you. And what else? Anything else you can remember? Good. I'm just going to check sound. And to do that, I'm just going to ask you mm -hmm. to state your name. But go ahead. Sharon Liu. And what town are you from, Sharon? Uh, South Windsor. Oh, I'm from South Windsor, too. <laughs> Hi, neighbor. Terrific, yeah. So, uh, Sharon, the question I have for you is, um, how were you impacted by the story of the Smith sisters from Glastonbury? Well, what I originally wanted to say <laughs> is sort of related. Just, um, well, God created everybody equal. Mm -hmm. And um, the, back in the biblical time, um, women had no right. And um, in the Greek philosopher, that Greek period when the government system were first formed, uh, only men could go to meetings. And that I've been learning history with my nine-year-old daughter, and it surprised me. Well, I knew about slavery a little bit before, um, but I learned a lot with her this, this year. And it surprised me, um, even up to the early 20th century, um, you know, during the first, first World War time, uh, women still had no rights. <laughs> and America is, um, well, obviously, I come from another country, but America, to me, um, is such a leading, one of the leading modern countries in the entire world. And still, in 1917, that long time, women had no say about things and had to fight for a lot of stuff. Um, and I remember reading some articles a while ago about um, nowadays um, um, women still receive less wage in a lot of professions um, in this day. So I think that will be something we can find about. We can, um, you know, um, voice. So you see that as, um, if I'm interpreting this correctly, you mm -hmm. see that as um, the uh, modern mm -hmm. Smith sisters or women's fight. Right. Yeah. So this is our issue. Yeah. This day. Yes. Yeah. No, um, I'm actually a um, homemaker right now. I homeschool, but I, I do, um, I'm a musician professionally. Mm -hmm. um, um, in, I, well, just I know in like m the medical um, system, professional profession in the educational system, um, the a lot of positions are paid more for men on the same position versus women, uh, and I do not think that's fair. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If we all work. Know, the same amount of um, work, same amount of time, um, or it may be even harder because we women had, you know, a lot of women have to work nowadays because of the economy mm -hmm. situation. But at the same time, we have to take care of the home, the, you know, um, our family members at the same time. It's, um, I, I think it will be even, um, more fair to for women to get more wages than men does nowadays because we do so much at home too, not just at work. And I'm just now lucky. You know, this this is like my couple of years of sabbatical. I actually have been teaching for over 20 years. I'm a musician, so and I'm very. I feel very precious. Very um. um I cherish this time that my husband doesn't want me to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's terrific. Yeah. Great. Well